chain gross polymerization reactions. And uh, I think we have talked about the, how we can determine the molecular weight or uh, degree polymerization or kinetic chain reactions last time. Well, kinetic chain length is defined as the chain length per radical, okay? So if you have a radical at the end of a chain, that's called the uh, kinetic chain, whereas if you have a dead chain end or without any inactive sites or radicals or terminated species, then we call that as a physical chain. Okay? And kinetic chain could be the same as uh, the physical chain in the case of uh, the disproportionation, whereas you have, uh, you know, doubled the kinetic chain length uh, where you have a physical chain, uh, where you have a coupling or a combination reactions. So we have uh, derived the equation, how we can define the, uh, you know, chain, kinetic chain length, and we have to assume that uh, we have a steady state. This proportionation case is that uh, you have, uh, you know, the, uh, the rate of polymerization divided by the rate of termination, and so that you know rate of termination is defined as the, the uh, total rate of uh, termination uh, of due to the disproportionation plus rate of termination done by the coupling, so that, uh, you know, the, the in the case of coupling, uh, we have... Uh, we have uh, defined we have defined the uh, the the half of the KTC because you have uh, two uh, the chains in in uh, in the case of coupling. So if I combine this together, then rate of uh, excuse me the kinetic chain length would be defined as uh, Lp divided by Lt plus at, at, at the, uh, the in the bracket with the uh, one plus y where y is uh, uh, defined as the, the fraction of your disproportionation. So if y is equal to zero, that means that you have a, you, 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 you have a total uh, you know, termination done by the coupling. So the, in the case of the coupling, your, you know, the kinetic chain length will be uh, two times the terminated spaces, which is the, the kinetic chain length of, uh, uh, of the, the chains. Uh, if, uh, if y is equal to 1, then uh, kinetic chain length is equal to Lp divided by Lt. Okay? Uh, so so uh, degree polymerization is equal to kinetic chain length in the case of disproportionation. And we knew that uh, you know, if you have a, a kinetic chain length, then we will be the physical chain uh, in the case of disproportionation. Whereas if I have a coupling reaction, then the two kinetic chain will combine together to have uh, uh, the uh, physical chain. So this could be elaborated with the, uh, the equation here, where we have uh, the you know, degree polymerization, or degree polymerization here is equal to 2 mu <coughs> divided by 1 plus y, where mu is equal to a kinetic chain le length. And, uh, and we can see that rate of polymerization can be, uh, you know, rewrite with the known variables and constants as equation two. And so that we can rewrite the uh, rate of, uh, uh, excuse me, the DPN as a known variable and the, uh, and the constants. Okay? Uh, or we can rewrite the equation number five as in here. So from this equation, number four and number five, when you increase the monomer concentration, then you increase, increase the, uh, the degree of polymerization, where, uh, whereas if you uh, increase the monomer concentration, then you will decrease the uh, degree of polymerization reactions. So uh, number four and number five equation will be quite, uh, quite useful in some cases. Uh, assuming that you do not have any chain transfer reactions. So in the next slide, we will take a look at what happened uh, when we have our chain transfer reactions. Okay? So we will modify this equation number four and five with the chain transfer uh, mode. Okay? Now, when you have a chain transfer, okay, then uh, growing chain 
with the radical at the end of the chain will meet the chain transfer agent. Chain transfer agent could be any species. Okay? Could be a polymer, could be monomer, or could be a, uh, any kind of solvents or additives. Okay? So when you have uh, X and Y, for example, then X will meet M dot, so that will be a uh, dead species, whereas we have a Y dot, which is a new radical, but it's not active anymore. So when the chain transfer occurs, radial polymerization will not be changing anymore because, uh, because we have a Y dot instead of uh, you know, M dot here. If you know the radial polymerization, then it will be defined as a KP times M dot concentration and monomer concentration instead of Y dot concentration. So chain transfer does not change radial polymerization but may have the effect on the uh, degree polymerization. Okay? So we'll take a look at the DPN instead uh, rather than the RP. Okay? So uh, this is one of the examples. When you have a solvent such as uh, carbon tetrachloride okay? the, and, and, and the growing chain with the uh, radical at the end of your chain, then the chloride uh, radical will meet the growing chain and will uh, form the uh, terminated species, and the, uh, the carbon trichloride radical. And this carbon trichloride is not going to be uh, uh, the, is not going to be initiator radical, or nor the growing chain. And it's an independent species from what we have already talked about, M dot, M, or I dot. So. Uh, it will not affect the, uh, the total radial polymerization, but may affect the uh, DPN because presence of this XY will terminate the species. So this will affect the radial polymerization, but does not affect the LP. Now, chain transfer occurs uh, in many cases when you have a solvent or any uh, chain transfer agents. Uh, this will be called as an additives. In this case, we have a very high chain transfer coefficient, which will be defined in the next slides. Okay? And chain transfer occurs uh, due to the presence of the monomer, or due to the presence of a growing chain, or, uh, or any other species. So uh, in many cases, the uh, chain transfer occurs by the presence of a Chain transfer agent, chain transfer agent, or the uh, solvents. <coughs> okay. So uh, we have uh, we have uh, you know, in many cases the, uh, the add the inhibitor or retarder in uh, in the monomers, which can uh, you know terminate or which can bother the uh, polymerization reactions or done by automatic uh, you know, polymerizations. <coughs> now this we, uh, inhibit means that pro, pro, uh, protect or prevent the uh, polymerization reactions, uh, whereas a retarder will delay the polymerization reactions. Okay? So inhibitor the role of inhibitor and role of uh, retarder is a little different. Uh, so uh, the component for inhibitor is usually called the hydroquinone. And hydroquinone looks something like this. And uh, it will lose the protons from hydroxyl group. And uh, if, you, if you lose your uh, you know, the hydrogen radical, then one of this radical will combine it here because it's not stable. And the one of this you know, double bond, one of this double bond will form the, uh, you know, all the electrons. And those electrons from one of this carbon will meet with the, uh, another electron from oxygen, will form this double bond, and vice versa. So you have a, you know, exchange reaction between the uh, hydroquino with diol. So from this equilibrium reaction, uh, 
the uh, the uh, the radical will <coughs> radical will uh, you know get the uh, the reaction. So this hydroquinone will act as an inhibitor of your polymerization radical polymerization reactions. Whereas if you have a molcopton containing thiol, this SH group is called a thiol. The thiol has an active hydrogen, just like an alcohol. Okay, this active hydrogen uh, will lose the uh, you know hydrogen radical. This hydrogen radical S dot will act as a retarder, scavenging the uh, radical growing chain, and uh, it will delay the uh, polymerization reactions. So uh, the uh, so the inhibitor or retarder is present in your monomeric systems, which will act as a, as a chain transfer agent. Uh, and in this case, we can rewrite the, uh, the we can rewrite the, uh, the uh, formation rate of uh, polymer, okay? Formation rate of polymer, uh, which could be RT. RT is, it was defined as RTD plus RTC but if you look at the, uh, uh, the, if you consider the chain, uh, the kinetic chain length, then it will be half of this, because the uh, chain, the kinetic chain length is doubled in the case of coupling reactions. So uh, RTD plus half of this RTC plus summation of your chain transfer reactions. So if you have uh, many chain transfer reaction, reaction one by Done, uh, you know, done by the uh, solvent, or done by the inhibitor, done by the uh, growing chain. Then you add those chain transfer reaction mode uh, in this equation. So this is the general equation of the formation rate of your polymer. And so, uh, so the DPN is defined as the rate of, uh, you know, uh, the propagation divide by the rate of formation of your polymer, which is RT, so that if you replace this RT with, uh, with, uh, with not only this, just the coupling and uh, disproportionation, but you can add the, uh, the sigma RTL, okay, in the denominator, and you can rewrite this equation. And because you know M dot could be deleted, could be replaced, or substituted with a known variable uh, and the constants uh, so that you can rewrite this equation with the next equation here. DPN is equal to, you know, uh, KPM divided by some of the known equation here with the uh, chain transfer reaction constant uh, or KTL, rate constant of the chain due to the chain transfer the XY, which should be a chain transfer agent, or, or many other uh, the reaction modes. Okay, if you flip over this equation on the top, you know this equation is defined as the flip over of the uh, DPN without any chain transfer reaction. Okay, so this is equal to our previous equation here. Equation number four, okay. Equation number four, uh, in the reverse of the equation number four, plus, plus, you know, KPM is in the in the denominator, and you can have many of the other uh, the uh, chain transfer reaction modes. First done by perhaps a solvent. Maybe done by chain transfer agent maybe done by growing chain, and so on. If you, if you look at this e constants, KTL due to S, KTL due to T, or KTL due to A, whatever, we can redefine this constants as a CS or CT, okay, with the concentration of S, S could be solvent, or T could be concentration of uh, chain transfer agent, or A could be any species. Okay? Then CS and CT is defined as a chain transfer coefficient. Okay? 
Now, you can, you can calculate this CS and CT if you plot 1 over dpn with the uh, concentration of S divided by M here in the X and Y, and the slope might be CS, and the uh, uh, intercept could be 1 over dpn zero without any chain transfer uh, reactions. Okay? So this way you can calculate the CS and CT and so on. Okay? Uh, when you have a when, when you mean the high chain transfer coefficient, that means that you have a very high slope of this 1 over dpn versus the S over M. So if you go back, I have rewrite that uh, in the case of chain transfer, chain transfer uh, due to the presence of solvents, we experience high chain transfer coefficients. So if you have a solvent, Okay, and you have a CS, very high CS, means that you have a very high chain transfer due to the presence of the solvents. Or, you know, intentionally, if you add the chain transfer agents, okay, uh, so that you induce the chain transfer reaction, terminating the uh, active species. Okay, so this is the... Uh, example of the chain transfer reactions uh, in the radical polymerization reactions. So we can rewrite the, uh, all the equations here. Okay. This is the final equation. Uh, uh, assuming that you have uh, chain transfer reactions. If you do not have any chain transfer reaction, well, this is very simple. Okay, simple. And uh, this is the flip over of your equation number four. Uh, that we have just arrived, the derived. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the effect of the temperature on the rate of polymerization and effect of temperature on the uh, degree of polymerization. Okay. Uh, so we will look at the uh, temperature dependence of the rate of polymerization and the, uh, the degree of polymerization reactions. If you increase the temperature, well, we can commonly think about perhaps the rate of polymerization could be pretty much accelerated. Okay? Whereas the DPN, perhaps we do not know much about this DPN. But we can scientifically describe this uh, temperature dependence using the equations that we have just derived. Okay, uh, okay. let's recall that we have a rate of polymerization, okay? Equation here is defined as Kp times Kt or something, and uh, I2, which is a concentration of the initiator, uh, to the half, to the square root, and the monomer concentrations. So if you increase the monomer concentration, you can increase your rate Lp, and if you increase the initiator concentration, you can also increase your rate of polymerization. But what about the temperature? Temperature effect does not, uh, it, it is not included in this equation here. But if you take a look at the Kp, Kt, and Kd, that's the uh, rate constant. The rate constant is related with the uh, temperature. If you recall the Arrhenius equations, Okay, our new equations. So if you take a, a, the logarithm of this rate equation, then you can rewrite this equation on the bottom here as uh, equation number one. And monomer concentration and initiator concentration okay, will affect the Lp, but does not say anything about the temperature. Okay. Temperature will not change monomer concentration, okay? Temperature will not change initiator concentrations. But uh, rate, const rate constants should have been influenced by the temperature. Okay, so if you can write, if you can recall the Kp, Kd, and Kt as an Arrhenius type of the uh, equation here, okay, as K, you know, the K, Kp0, 
uh, or the exponential to the minus EP divided by RT. Uh, then you can rewrite this equation here as a temperature effect. Uh, well, we know that the P is a propagation rate constant, D is a decomposition rate constant, and T is the uh, termination re uh, reaction rate constants. Now, scientists have already measured the uh, usually the, uh, the activation energy, which is a slope of 1 over T, and the logarithm of the, uh, uh, the Kp or Kd or Kt, okay? Then they uh, look at this activation energy will range from 2 to about 30, depending upon your mode of your you know, reactions. So in the case of a propagation, it will be ranging from 5 to about 8 kilocalorie per mole. Decomposition rate, activation energy for decomposition is pretty high. It's about 30 kilocalorie. Uh, activation energy for termination is in the range of about 2 to 5. Okay? But remember, this is all positive. Okay? This is all positive. So activation energy, uh, 1 over t, 1 over t, and the uh, rate constant, Ln k, whatever it is, will be <coughs> sloped like this. Okay. Oh yes, yes, that's true because because uh, because we have a net, we have a minus sign over here, so that it should be it should activation energy should be in the uh, in the positive uh, you know cases. Okay, so. Uh, Activation energy will be ranging from about 2 to about 30, depending upon your mode of reactions. Now, when you rewrite this equation, okay, the logarithm uh, or derivative, derivative of uh, ln Lp divide, excuse me, if you, if you, you know, if you divide this by t, whole equation divide by t, and make a derivative, Make a derivative. Then means that uh, then means that ln Lp over t. Uh, in other words, if you plot derivative of uh, ln Lp divided by derivative of t will be the slope of uh, the plot ln Lp divided by t, right? Is equal to, uh, you know, ln m divided by t, okay? And ln m, uh, ln f i2 <coughs> divided by t. And I, again, as I said, uh, temperature will not affect the uh, monomer concentration and the, uh, the initiator concentration. So they will be negligible. Right. Whereas, uh, if you divide this whole equation by t and make a derivative, yes, we have a temperature dependence of this rate constants. So, the remaining equation will be d ln Lp divided by dt is equal to d some constant divided by dt. Okay, and we'll will be, you know, rewrite this equation here by uh, Ep minus Et plus ED, and you know this you know, magnitude of this activation energy, right? So that you can write perhaps 7 minus 2 plus 15, okay, is, uh, is positive because you only have a minus sign in the termination mode, so it will be about around 20, okay? Now, if you, if you make a, you know, uh, you know equation here it will be about r t to the square so the r is a rate constant and t is the kelvin temperature so it should be always positive so whole right hand side will be the positive that means if you plot ln r p over t your slope will be always positive so if you increase the temperature then you will increase 
the rate of polymerization reactions because you have a positive slope. So if you increase the temperature, rate of, po rate of uh, polymerization will increase as we have commonly think about this, uh, the, uh, these equations. However, however, uh, rate of increase of your rate of increase of your temperature will be will be slowing down. That means that it's not increasing linearly, but perhaps increasing asymptotically, something like this. So slope will be quite uh, quite high at the beginning, but it may not be the same as uh, at high temperature than at low temperature. Okay, that's the uh, temperature dependence of Rp. But what about the degree of polymerization reactions? Okay, DPN could be defined as, uh, as uh, also as uh, equation four uh, at the beginning of our uh, lecture here today. So DPN, if you assume that we do not have any chain transfer, will be defined as Rp divided by Rt here. And uh, you know because we know that kinetic chain length, kinetic chain length equation, or degree polymerization, from uh, with the same analogy, we can rewrite uh, the equation as in the case of rate of polymerization, and will be EPN minus 2t divided by 2 minus here divided by ED uh, uh, divided by 2. So instead of positive value here, in the case of Rp, this will be negative value. Okay, so will be about. Uh, let's say it's about what uh, minus 15 excuse me minus mm, minus 10 okay minus 10 so will be always uh, negative meaning that if you plot if you plot T over mu in the logarithmic scale logarithmic scale, it will be always negative. So if you increase the temperature, then your degree of uh, the kinetic chain length will always decrease. So in summary, in summary, we can say that if you increase the temperature, mu decreases, meaning that you decrease your degree of polymerizations. If you increase the temperature, then rate of polymerization will increase, just like the case of the initiator concentration, because Rp is uh, square root independently, uh, independence with the uh, initiator concentration and the, and the linear, linear dependence with the monomer concentrations. Okay. And, uh, and these are the uh, correlation that we can rewrite uh, in on the temperature dependence of Rp and our DPN or kinetic chain length. Okay. So so DPN and Rp uh, have been uh, related with the uh, temperature, and there are some effects of temperature on the polymerization uh, rate and the uh, total number of uh, number average molecular weight or number average degree of polymerizations. Now we have uh, uh, in, in the case of radical polymerization reactions we usually have a ceiling temperature. Okay? In other words uh, polymerization and depolymerization or degradation reaction will always happen. Okay? If you have a growing chain of your uh, the monomer Mn dot, okay, Mn dot, uh, which has a repeating unit of, uh, of n number, will meet M, and it, if we have a you know polymerization reaction rate, uh, then M will add one more monomeric units, so that you have M n plus one dot, 
And that's the polymerization reaction, and that's the propagation reactions. However, if you look at very carefully this arrow here, arrow will be going forward or going backward. If I have a you know, backward reaction, that means that you have a deep polymerization, so you lose your monomeric units from your growing chain, and you lose one uh, unit as well. Now, this is called the equilibrium reaction. So in, uh, in the uh, uh, radical polymerization reaction, we always experience this type of uh, polymerization, deep polymerization, <laughs> The, the reactions. And the temperature at which this depolymerization reaction occurs is called the ceiling temperature. Okay. Ceiling temperature, therefore, can be defined as, you know, the, from the, uh, the Gibbs free energy of polymerization reactions. Okay. At the equilibrium, delta GP, G, delta GP is equal to zero, so will be defined as zero. So T will be you know, derived from delta HP divided by delta SP. And at that ceiling temperature, uh, you know, you can calculate the uh, delta, uh, the enthalpy of uh, the polymerization and enthalpy of the, uh, uh, excuse me, the entropy of the polymerization reactions. And, uh, and therefore, uh, no, the ceiling temperature is, uh, is pretty important. And uh, at that ceiling temperature for the polymerization systems, you have to know what happened. Okay? For all the monomer systems, we have uh, ceiling temperature curves. Uh, uh, and, uh, and polymerization reaction, excuse me, I cannot, uh, no, uh, I cannot modify this constants, but uh, uh, the first equation, this kp is a subscript rather than this is number here. Uh, and we have a k minus p, minus p here, okay? kp, some concentration monomer in the red growing chain, minus k minus p instead of uh, kp. Uh, so you have uh, the, uh, the rate of polymerization is equal to, you know, propagation reaction, polymerization reaction, minus depolymerization reaction. Okay. Okay. Uh, and you can also define the, uh, the uh, some equations here, uh, the Kp and K minus P, uh, and so on. Okay. And in the next slide, we can see that uh, total polymerization will, po total polymerization rate will be determined by, uh, determined by this, the, you know, red dot, whereas K, total K is here. Usually when you increase the temperature, when you increase the temperature, rate of uh, polymerization or the rate constants will of course increase, but it's not always the case because uh, when you take a look at this yellow, uh, the, uh, the, the blue line, this is the uh, rate of polymerization, okay? So rate of polymerization, of course, it will increase in following this blue line as you increase the temperature. However, at a certain temperature, for example, around here, which is about 450, then rate of depolymerization, of course, will increase, okay? If you take the uh, blue line minus black line, it will follow this, the red line. Okay? And red line will be, you know, total, the real uh, rate of polymerizations. And at that temperature where the, uh, there is no further reactions, no further reaction, this is called the uh, ceiling temperature. And above this temperature, there is no further reaction. But below the ceiling temperature, reaction rate is uh, reaction rate constant is quite slow. So you have to consider the uh, ceiling temperature in all radical polymerization reactions. If you take a look at the ceiling temperature, 
ceiling temperature for uh, some of these systems, such as uh, styrene monomer system, ceiling temperature using the bulk polymerization reaction without any solvent will be around 230 degrees C, methyl methoxylate 160, ethylene 407, propylene 300, alpha methyl styrene 6 degrees. So above the ceiling temperature, you will not be able to obtain the, uh, the polymer due to the reason that I have just explained about the, uh, about the ceiling temperature concept. Okay? So, well, now for all of these monomer systems, we have to proceed our polymerization a little below the, uh, little below the ceiling temperature, okay? which has been known so far. Uh, in this case, delta HP, delta HP, delta H, or the, uh, the enthalpy change is a little different, but entropy change is not very high, uh, and this is very typical for uh, the, uh, the you know, uh, polymer uh, and the deep polymer equilibria uh, systems. Finally, uh, I need to talk about the alter acceleration concept in the radical polymerization reactions. You knew that uh, we have a gel point. We have a gel point in, uh, in the condensation polymers. Okay? In the condensation polymerization reactions or stackverse polymerization reactions, gel point always occur due to the presence of a monomer containing more than uh, two, by fun two uh, functional groups. For example, if you have a trifunctional monomer, tetrafunctional monomer, we always have a network polymer or cross-linked polymer, and we have to think about the critical uh, extent of reaction, PC. Okay? That's a concept applied in the condensation polymers or stack gross polymers. Now, in the chain gross polymerization reactions, we have a pretty similar concept. And gel point concept or, or the auto acceleration concept without any, you know, addition of uh, trifunctional or tetrafunctional monomers. Okay. Uh, what you can see uh, actually is that uh, when you increase the time of your polymerization, okay, okay it will follow uh, when you have a you know, certain monomer concentrations, certain monomer concentrations, you increase the yield or extent of reaction okay, as a function of time. So if you increase the concentration of your monomer slowly, uh, then you, you can increase the yield so that you can, you can your polymer will, uh, you, you will be formed, of course, as a function of time. This is not very, uh, you know, long time, but it's a short time. But monomer concept, if you increase the monomer concentration to a certain point, it follows yield point here. But after certain critical concentration with monomer, your yield will drastically increase, okay? Drastically increase, meaning that you have a very high viscosity. It'll, it, uh, it experiences something like a gel or something called the, uh, the auto-acceleration, auto-acceleration, or Tromsdorf effect, who found this effect, okay? The Trom Tromsdorf found this gel effect, and uh, this is what they call the auto-acceleration uh, uh, concept. And you can describe this effect, something like this, and uh, well, this is just uh, one of the issue that I can raise you, but uh, you don't need to remember this equation. Okay? I, I just wanted to see, say that in your, in your radical polymerization reaction in the future, uh, you will be able to look at this type of auto acceleration uh, in, uh, in the future, perhaps. So with that, I just wanted to close this uh, chapter nine on the chain gross polymerization reactions. Okay. 
So in summary, we have talked about in chapter 9 the uh, three very important steps plus one more, okay? Three very important steps are in initiation, propagation, and termination. And finally, we have a chain transpirations. Okay? And we derived uh, the radiations, R RI or RD, okay? And rate constants, and RP, and KP, and RT. And RT is very important because RT termination mode is, is governed by first coupling or combination and by disproportionation. And we have also uh, introduced the uh, kinetic chain and the physical chains. And in the termination mode, uh, two kinetic chain will meet each other to become combined together to become a one physical chain by the coupling reaction or combination reactions, or two kinetic chain will become two physical chain by disproportionation. In other words, one of these hydride or protons will be transferred to, uh, to the second species to, be, to, be, uh, to have a double bond species. So you have a two physical chain, so that your kinetic chain length will be the same as physical chain length. In case. Or in the case of uh, the coupling, one physical chain is coming from two uh, kinetic chains so that your molecular will be doubled by the uh, coupling reactions. Fourth reaction mode is chain transfer. Okay, Chain transfer could be anything, but could be perhaps due to the presence of a solvent because later the chain transfer coefficient uh, due to the presence of solvent is pretty high. In other words, CS is pretty high, and, uh, and, and uh, the CS could be, of course, determined by the 1 over dpn uh, with the concentration rich in monomers. Uh, and uh, we, we also talked about the temperature effect of the rate of polymerization. Rate of polymerization will, of course, increase if you increase the temperature, but uh, it has a detrimental effect on the uh, deeper polymerizations. So deeper polymerization will not linearly dependent upon the uh, temperatures. Temperature is a reverse effect, okay? as we have uh, already described about this, the, uh, the equations. And finally, we talked about the alter acceleration concept. Now, uh, and also, we, we also talked about the initiators, initiators. Uh, so please look at the, what kind of uh, initiators quite necessary for uh, this, uh, the radical polymerizations. Okay? Now, in the next chapter, the chapter 10, we will talk about the ionic polymerizations uh, very briefly. The ionic polymerization require the monomer, of course, and the initiator. And those initiator for ionic polymerization will be different from the initiator for uh, radical polymerizations. Okay? So the type of initiator will determine the, uh, the, the, the mode of your uh, chain course polymerizations, whether it could be radical, whether it could be uh, uh, ions, okay? or anion, or uh, the cations. So I hope you can remember some of the structures of the initiators, uh, particularly uh, containing the, uh, the symmetrical, uh, symmetrical initiator uh, in the radical polymers, polymerization reactions, such as uh, peroxide or thiol, or excuse me, the uh, uh, you know sulfide, or uh, or the azo group containing monomers. Okay, uh, I don't want you to remember everything, but I want you to remember at least a couple of uh, the initiator structures, so that it could be broken into two species and can attack the uh, monomer containing the double bonds, such as a styrene or uh, the methyl methoxylate or, or the double bond containing monomers. Okay, this is uh, what I can summarize, uh, what I can tell you in, uh, in, the, in the case of radical polymerization reactions. In chapter 10, uh, perhaps next week, uh, we will talk about uh, ionic polymerization reactions 
and I will tell you the difference between radical versus the ions. Uh, we have already touched about this fact, but I uh, will tell you about the cationic first and the anionics. Uh, and then I think we will, in chapter 11, we'll talk about the copolymerization reactions. Okay? Copolymerization reactions. We have talked about the homopolymerization here in this case, but you need to think about the copolymers. If I have a different monomer, different monomer with a different reactivity, then uh, what happened? Uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, if, you if you think about the copolymers, we have a block copolymer, we have a random copolymer, we have a uh, you know, graft copolymer. Uh, and so on. So you can make block copolymer, uh, or you can make a random copolymer, you can make a graft copolymer, you know, by changing the monomer reactivity and by changing the, uh, the ratio of your monomers as well. Okay? So uh, we can derive some equations. We can, of course, uh, talk about the concept of the copolymerization reactions in this case. So, so far, I think we have, uh, you know, touched about uh, the radical polymerization reactions. Yeah, he said uh, the, uh, how we can derive this equation to this equation, okay? Well, I did not give you everything, but if you look at the derivative polymerization, okay, equation, let's go back. Now, derivative polymerization, Yes, here. Degree polymerization is defined as equation number four, right? So if you take a, uh, you know, when you have a, mm, or or if I think this this is this contains y, but let's say that we do not have any y here. Uh, I think you can derive the definition of mu here definition of uh, you know coupling I, th I think you can start from mm, I think you can start from uh, equation number four and take the uh, ln dpn could be mu right could be mu if y is equal to uh, one right if y is equal to uh, 0, it could be uh, the 2 mu, right? So let's say that we have uh, this proportionation only. Uh, if you take uh, ln, then, uh, you know, ln m plus, you can derive this i2 somewhere, and you can take the uh, ln of uh, constants, okay? k, p, divided by kt, and kd, and I said the y is equal to... Uh, one, so that you have a two, two kt divided by kt is equal to one kt. Anyway, kp divided by kt times kd, and you take the logarithm and go back to the equation. That's why the ep was in the in the numerator, whereas uh, in the denominator, pulmoe, is equal to e the terminated mode and the decomposition mode. So it will be minus minus here. Okay? So if you remember the, the equation uh, containing the rate constants, monomer concentration, and the initiator concentration, you can derive this equation very easily. <coughs> 